Okay, so our video series on step by step treatment of hypertension in this video will be talking about anti hypertensive drugs. First of all, we'll talk about the classes of drugs, their mechanism of action, and then we'll talk about the side effects. The first one, calcium channel blocker. Calcium channel blocker in include amlodipine, philodipine, all the drugs that end with dipenes. The mechanism of action is that they prevent entry of calcium into the muscles of the heart and vessels, leading to decreased contractility of heart and dilation of the blood vessels that lead to lower blood pressure. The side effects include peripheral edema since they cause vasodilation that causes retention of fluid in the peripheries leading to peripheral edema. And they also slow down the activity of smooth muscles of the GI tract resulting in constipation. Then we have beta blockers, metoprolol, carbidolol, nebivolol, all those drugs that end with lols. They decrease the heart rate and the side effect is bradycardia. Decreasing heart rate, they lower down the blood pressure because they decrease the heart activity. Then we have angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. In ACE inhibitors, we have captopril, lisinopril. These all drugs end with the suffix pril. And what is the mechanism of action? Basically, angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme. Now, angiotensin 2 acts on the vessel and causes vasoconstriction. Angiotensin 2 causes release of aldosterone and raises aldosterone levels. Angiotensin 2 causes ADH secretion. All these actions lead to vasoconstriction and fluid retention, salt retention in body leading to high blood pressure. So what we do with ACE inhibitors is that we block the activity of this enzyme. When we block the activity of this enzyme, this conversion stops and no more angiotensin 2 is there leading to no vasoconstriction, no aldosterone secretion and no ADH secretion that controls the blood pressure. But the side effect is that it causes scuff and angioedema. The thing is that if we inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme, this angiotensin converting enzyme is also responsible for the degradation of bradykinin. So if we inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme, the degradation of bradykinin will also be inhibited and bradykinin levels will be elevated. Elevated bradykinin levels will lead to cuff and angioedema, which is a common complaint. Cuff is an important side effect of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Then we have hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia occurs because we are blocking the production of aldosterone. Aldosterone causes reabsorption of sodium and loss of potassium in urine. Since we have blocked the action of aldosterone, potassium will be retained in blood and potassium level in blood will be high. So that will result in hyperkalemia. Now coming to the drugs, angiotensin receptor blocker, ARBs. They include losartan, valsartan, all the drugs that end with the suffix sartans. They block the angiotensin 2 action at the receptor level. They do not let angiotensin 2 bind to it 81 receptor that causes vasoconstriction of the vessels. So when we are blocking the action of angiotensin 2 at the receptor level and we do not let it bind to 81 receptors, there is no vasoconstriction and vessels are dilated, leading to lowered blood pressure. Other than that, it also has side effect of hyperkalemia. Other than that, one important thing is that most often the patients are started with ACE inhibitor drugs to control hypertension, but then they start developing cuff. So if the patient comes back to you with the complaint of cuff, then you have to shift the patient from angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors to angiotensin receptor blocker because angiotensin receptor blockers do not cause cough. Coming towards diuretics, thiazide diuretic, that include hydrochlorothiazide, chlorothalidone. They inhibit sodium and chloride absorption from distal convoluted tubule. This is the distal convoluted tubule. They inhibit the absorption of sodium and chloride. So when sodium and chloride are are not absorbed, they are lost in urine. When sodium and chloride are lost in urine, water follows salt. So water and salt are being lost from the body, resulting in lower blood pressure. The side effect of thiazide diuretic is, is it causes hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, hyperuricemia, hypokalemia, and hypercalcemia. 
Coming to loop diuretic, loop diuretic include furosemide. They inhibit another channel which is present in the ascending part of the nephron. It is present in the thick ascending loop of nephron. They block sodium, potassium and chloride reabsorption. When sodium, potassium and chloride are lost in urine, water follows the suit and water and salt are lost in urine resulting in lower blood pressures. But loop diuretics have the side effect of autotoxicity, hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. Coming towards arterial dilators. In arterial dilators, we have hydrolazine. They directly act on vessel and cause vasodilation. When you directly cause dilation of arteries, blood pressure suddenly lower downs. And when blood pressure suddenly lower downs, heart starts to pump more. That is called as reflex tachycardia. Heart rate increases in response to sudden drop in blood pressure that causes reflex tachycardia. So the side effect of arterial dilator is that they cause lower blood pressure, but they, they cause sudden drop in blood pressure. And that sudden drop in blood pressure due to vasodilation of vessels causes reflex tachycardia. Then we have centrally acting drugs. Centrally acting drugs include clonidine. Centrally acting drug actually cause decreased sympathetic outflow from the brain. Decreased sympathetic outflow from the brain causes decreased sympathetic activity and decreased sympathetic activity cause lower blood pressure due to vasodilation. Clonidine has severe withdrawal symptoms since it causes it decreases sympathetic activity when all of a sudden you take the patient off clonidine, patient starts to develop very high sympathetic activity resulting in tremors and anxiety. So it has a very severe withdrawal symptoms. In summary, we talked about calcium channel blocker, beta blocker. Then we talked about ACE inhibitors and we talked about cuff and angioedema due to bradykinin. If the patient develops cuff after ACE inhibitor, shift the patient to angiotensin receptor blocker. Then we talked about thiazide diuretic that inhibits sodium chloride reabsorption from distal convoluted tubule. And then we talked about loop diuretic that causes sodium potassium chloride reabsorption from the thin ascending loop. Then we talked about arterial dilator that cause sudden drop in blood pressure due to arterial vasodilation that results in reflex tachycardia, increased heart rate. Then we talked about clonidine that decreased sympathetic activity but has severe withdrawal symptoms. So this was all about antihypertensive drugs. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on step-by-step -step treatment of hypertension. Thank you very much.